Hello students, welcome to NUC Biology. In the last two classes, we discussed about epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Now we are left with uh, two more tissues that is muscular tissue and nervous tissue. In this video, we will cover both the tissues, muscular and nervous tissue. Come, let's start. Welcome back students. First, let's begin with muscular tissue or muscle tissue. So, if you just take the section of a muscle or if you just consider a muscle, then the cells present in that tissue, we call it as muscle fiber. Okay. So, the cells of muscle tissue, muscle tissue called as muscle fiber. So, these muscle fiber, nothing but the cells are generally cylindrical in structure like this. They are generally cylindrical. So, these cylindrical cells arranged in parallel like this, parallelly arranged. So, these are all represent one muscle fibers, nothing but the muscle cells. So, inside a muscle cell, once again, we are going to see a fine thread like or fiber like structures. So, like this. If I just pull the, imagine I am just pulling out these fibers, how it looks. So, these are the muscle fibers. Sorry, the fibers which are present inside this muscle fiber, we call it as myofibrils. Myofibrils. So, we will study in detail about the muscular tissue in our upcoming chapter that is uh, locomotion and movement. So, here in the word itself is indicating the muscle tissues are muscular tissue associated with locomotion and movement of the body. Locomotion and movement. So, this tissue is responsible for showing these two actions. So, what is the main difference between locomotion and movement? Say for example, I am standing in a particular place, but I can able to move certain uh, organs like hands. I can move my hands like this. I can write like this without changing my position. I can write, I can do action, I can blink my eyes, right? So, I can do some actions in my through my fingers. So, all these actions I can do just by standing in a place. So, this is called what? This is what the movement, okay? So, this movement is also carried by the muscular tissue, right? What about locomotion? Locomotion means I am standing here. Suppose if I have to move there then I need to change my place I need to walk certain distance then only I can show the locomotion so locomotion means changing the position of a body from one place to another place that is called locomotion but movement is without changing also we can show the uh, motion that is a movement movement locomotion are two separate things right Locomotion cannot be a movement, but movement can be a locomotion. We will understand the meaning of these terms in detail when we are studying about this chapter, particularly locomotion and movement. Okay. So, in general, this is associate the muscle tissue or muscular tissue. These are generally what? Cylindrical in shape. These are cylindrical and shows many uh, fiber-like structures called myofibrils. Right. So, these muscle cells, they can show contraction, they can show contraction and relaxation. You have to remember this. It can show contraction and relaxation. I can contract my muscle, I can relax it. Okay. So, when it is under relaxation, it will lengthen. It will lengthen. So, suppose if you consider this is a cell, muscle cell, it will be lengthened or it is a wider when it is in a relaxed state. When it is a contract state, it will be shortened. It will be shortened. That means it is somewhat like this. So, who is controlling that, uh, sorry, that process of contraction and relaxation? Of course, somebody should be there to uh, control it, right? Just like a remote, how we operate the remote, in a, that is the channels in the TV. Just like that. This contraction and relaxation of a muscles will be controlled by nervous system. Nervous system. Okay. Let's have a glance over it. How this nervous system is responsible for contraction and relaxation of the muscle tissue. Okay. Let's imagine this is our muscle cell. This is the muscle cell. 
द मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ द मजर सेल इज कॉल्ड सार्कोलेम्मा सार्कोलेम्मा जस्ट लाइक प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज कॉल्ड सार्कोलेम्मा एंड हियर इन साइड दी साइटोप्लाज्म वी कॉल इट एज सार्कोप्लाज्म सार्कोप्लाज्म नाउ लेट्स इमेजिन दिस मजल इज इन अ रिलैक्स स्टेट when it is gets contract it will get shortened like this so just now i told it is held by or it is controlled by the nervous system or the neurons so let's imagine here is our neuron so these are the dendrites okay so this is the nucleus and this is the axon so this is the ending nerves so when this neuron get stimulus from the sensory organs say for example i have seen a, a snake or just imagine i just saw a tiger so i'm not going to stand in this place i will just run so how it is possible because my sensory organ that is the eyes are giving signal to my muscle so that i should run away from this place right so by taking all the information from the sensory organs or from the central nervous system this neuron this neuron conducting the impulses in the form of certain chemicals say for example from the nerve endings here it releases all the chemicals these chemicals we call it as neurotransmitters these are known as neurotransmitters neurotransmitters say for every neurotransmitter there are certain specific receptors will be present on the surface of this membrane say for example here on the surface there are certain receptors are there see these receptors are specific for this particular neurotransmitter so when it is released into the junction that means this gap what you are seeing between the neuron and the muscle we call it as what this entire portion is known as neuro muscular junction neuromuscular junction that is n m j neuromuscular junction okay so these chemicals that is nothing but the neurotransmitter comes and sit on their specific receptors it should give certain signals right what signal it will give so just focus here before binding the receptors that is the chemicals before binding these receptors there are plenty of sodium ions will be present externally that is outside the membrane this is what the scenario and inside the membrane there are k plus ions so this situation is always be the same always n plus ion outside the membrane that is plasma membrane and inside always the k plus ion it will not allow these molecules to get exchange unless or until it won't get any signals from the neuron so as soon as it gets the signal from the neuron that is in the form of this chemicals it alters the membrane permeability just focus here i'm using the term membrane permeability so because of that sodium ions start coming inside that is inside the cell so let's imagine these sodiums are getting inside so once the sodium start coming in they start giving signal to the endoplasmic reticulum so this endoplasmic reticulum stores k plus ions so it is giving signal already i came inside why you are holding this k plus just released out so all the sorry not k plus it is ca plus calcium so this calcium start releasing out from the endoplasmic reticulum so because of that that means as soon as it release the calcium ion it shows the contraction of the muscles that means muscle contraction occurs muscle contraction occurs so as a result it will get shortened are you getting my point so the process of influx influx means entering inside the cell of sodium ion we call it as depolarization this process we call it as depolarization or excitation or excitation okay so when i stop running because i just took the example of the tiger is uh, i just saw the tiger i'm running okay so when i reach 
the comfortable place so that in a safer place then i stop running so by that time my muscle has to be in a relaxed state right so what happened that time this receptors which are so binding to these sorry chemicals which are so binding to these receptors will be go back to the neurons that means neurons will be really really sorry receive all these chemicals and as a result the sodium again goes outside the plasma membrane and because of there is no sodium ions this k plus also enter inside the endoplasmic reticulum that means muscle contraction come back to the original state it gets relaxed once again so this phenomena keep occurring whenever we are about to show the about to show the contraction of the muscles okay so once again you will study in detail in the locomotion and movement it is just a overview right you just take the screenshot now will study about the different types of muscle tissue. Muscle tissues can be classified into three types. One is skeletal muscle. Second one is, this is very important, smooth muscle, smooth muscle. And the third one is cardiac muscle, cardiac muscle, okay. So concentrate here, it is very, very important, both for your board exam and knee point of view, okay. So as the name itself is indicating, skeletal muscle, it is associated with the skeleton. So these muscles, these muscles associate, associate with the skeleton, with the skeleton. See generally how it looks, these are generally cylindrical like this. These are generally cylindrical and unbranched. Okay, so this is one cell. This is another cell. Okay, these are cylindrical in shape and unbranched. Cylindrical and unbranched. So usually one cell is formed by many cells. By combination of many, not combination, by the association of many cells when the cells are in the embryonic stage. Say for example, when the cells were very small in embryonic condition, these cells merge together and form one muscle cell. So because of this reason, the nucleus of these cells are present within one cell only, like this. Okay, when you observe the muscle cell, sorry, this skeletal cell under the microscope, we are supposed to see multinucleated condition okay and at the same time there are certain dark and light bands are associated here that means they are present like this it's a dark band light bands we can't see once again there is a dark band light band dark band light band dark bands so like this so these bands we can observe only when we see these muscles under the microscope so that's why we call it as multinucleated multinucleated and striated muscles striated muscles okay have you understood this much now as i said these muscles are associated with the skeleton this is under the control of our will that means whenever i want to show the movement i can show it is under my control say for example if i want to write this is under my control i can write okay if I want to move my hands like this, I can do it. This is under my control. This is voluntary in action. So hence we call it as voluntary muscles. These are voluntary muscles. Okay. So you have to remember these points. Now come to smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are somewhat spindle shaped. These are spindle shaped and uninucleate uninucleated cells so what does this sentence mean spindle shape means like this pointed at both ends this is what the spindle shape it is also known as fusiform muscles this is also called a fusiform fusiform muscles okay so like this it will be Are you seeing any kind of striations here? That means light and dark bands? No. So that's why these are known as unstriated muscles. Unstriated are unstriped muscles. 
or unstriped muscles. So these muscles generally associated with the visceral organs. So visceral organs means what? The digestive system. Digestive system consisting of esophagus, stomach, intestine, large intestine. Uh, then it also covers the kidney. That means so all these organs are nothing but visceral organs. So in these organs, these muscles lined around it. Okay. Say for example, let me show here. This is the esophagus. We can swallow the food. It is under our control. I can hold, I can keep the food in my mouth for a long time. It is under my control. But as soon as I swallow it, as soon as I swallow it, it is not under my control, right? It, it, it is just moving down. It is just get digested in the elementary canal. So at the time of going into the elementary canal, it shows like this alternate contraction and relaxation. This movement we call it as a peristaltic movement like this. Correct? And even in the stomach, it shows some churning movement. So all these actions, all these movements are associated by the visceral muscles or the smooth muscles which are so surrounding in that area. We call it as that layer, we call it as muscularis. Okay. So hence, uh, what shall we write? It is associated. It is associated with visceral organs. Visceral organs. The movement is not under our control. Hence, we call it as involuntary muscles. Involuntary muscles. Are you getting my point? Involuntary muscles. The last category that is the cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle name itself is indicating cardiac, the word associated to the heart. So here, these muscles are found in heart. They are found in heart. These are branched and striated. Branched and striated. Okay. So what does this sentence mean? Suppose if I show the muscle like this. So this is one cell. Let's imagine this is one cell. This is another cell I am writing here. Okay. So like this, it shows the branches. And when you observe it under the microscope, again, you are able to see like bands as it is appeared in the case of skeletal muscle. But it is very, very faint bands. But still, as we are seeing the striations, we call these muscles are striated muscles. Striated muscles. Of course, there is only single nucleus. The nucleus is present here. Okay. And one more important point. See, we know that heart keeps getting contract and relaxed to pump the blood to all the body parts. Right. So in order to contract, all the cells which are so present in this, it should show the movement of contraction, right? So simultaneously it will contract means it has to pass the signal. The depolarization has to occur between the cells. So here, let's imagine here the sodium ion is there. The sodium ion has to enter here. So the junction of these two muscles where it shows the depolarization, we call it as intercalated disc. This is called inter calated disc so intercalated disc are present in the cardiac muscle it is a characteristic feature intercalated disc are present disc are present so as these cells communicating each other then definitely there must be a cell junction we are going to see the cell junction here already we studied in epithelial tissue, there are four types of cell junctions are there. One is gap junctions, tight junction, then adhering junctions and desmosomes. Here, in these cells, we are going to see two types of cell junction. One is desmosomes, another one is gap junction. Why gap junction? See, for example, I will just enlarge this part only. Let me show you here. Let's imagine this is one cell and this is another cell. Okay. So here is the intercalated disc. This region is associated by intercalated disc, right? So now the sodium has to transmit from one cell to another cell. 
how it will transmit it requires some channel right so here between two muscles this cytoplasmic connection is known as what such a junctions we call it as what this is nothing but gap junction have you remember that so we are able to see gap junction here gap junction so like that suppose if the two muscles has to hold together tightly to show the contraction together then obviously obviously here plaque is there let's imagine this is the plaque and certain extra growth will comes through this plaque they can hold each other that is called desmosomes have you remember that so gap junction and desmosomes are seen in the cardiac muscle cell junction so let me write here desmosomes so the movement of the heart muscle is it under our control definitely not that means they are involuntary where shall i write i'll write here only these are involuntary muscle these are involuntary muscle if you just observe the cardiac muscle it shows both these muscles characteristic feature that means it shows the striation it is the characteristic feature of skeletal muscle and the function or the movement is not under our control that is involuntary in action this is the feature of smooth muscle okay but cardiac muscles are those muscles which are found only in the heart so you have to remember the intercalated disc and cell junction here also we can see the cell junction here also we can see the cell junction okay so these are some of the points of muscle tissue take the screenshot so this is about the muscular tissue that much is enough for your board exam as well as your neat exam now we'll move on to the last part of the animal tissue that is neural tissue friends actually there is a separate chapter in human physiology neural control and coordination in that we'll study in detail about the neurons different types of neurons bipolar neurons multipolar neurons the structure of the neurons and its mechanism everything but here just we'll have a glance that's it okay so neural tissue almost all our body function is controlled by the nervous tissue only that means the external stimulus which are so received by our sense organs that is five sense organs to this stimulus the response will be because of this presence of neural tissue in our body right so this neural tissue shows excitable that means it shows depolarization but it do not show contraction you have to remember the neural tissues are the tissue shows depolarization depolarization but not contraction not contraction see when we were talking about the muscle tissue it was showing depolarization but at the same time it was contraction also that means it shows contraction also but here it is not like that okay i will tell you how and the neural tissue mainly shows two categories one is neuron and another one is glial cells or neuroglial cells neuroglial cells here the neuron acts as a main it carry main function of a nervous system the main function carried by this neuron that is conduction of impulses carried by the neuron only but these neuroglia are just a supporting cells supporting cells more than one half of our neural tissue are composed by neuroglial cells only if i am just talking or just drawing here a typical neural cells neural cell or a neuron how it looks how it looks so these are the small branch structures okay a just rough diagram i'm drawing here and this part we call it as a dendrites dendrites so dendrites are the small branch structures which receive all the signals from the sensory organs as well as from the central nervous system okay we'll study what is central nervous system what is peripheral nervous system everything and it gives to the cell body so this portion we call it as cyton or cell body it consisting of certain granular substance called nissl granules nissl granules and from the cyton 
ये स्ट्रक्चर रन्स कंटिन्यूसली continuously which carrying the signal the signal which is so received by the dendrites from the sensory neuron that will be carried by this elongated structure we call it as a axon so this structure we call it as axon okay so this axon finally ends in like this branches we call it as nerve ending this is the nerve ending so just imagine it is receiving the signal it has to communicate to another neuron then what happen all the signals which are so taken by this neuron in the form of chemicals will be dumped here it will be dumped in this space so let's imagine one more neuron is waiting here one more neuron is there one more neuron is present here so these neurons are also having the receptors to these particular receptors these chemicals are comes and binding so this junction or this gap between the two neurons we call it as the synapse synapse so once again these chemicals are known as neurotransmitters neurotransmitters they are also we studied about the neurotransmitters the chemicals are released from the neurons but it gives signals to the muscle right but those that junction we called as neuromuscular junction because it is between neuron and the muscle cell but here it is between two neurons we call it as synapse okay so it can be excitable or it can be uh, a stop signal also okay so that's why i told it shows only depolarization that is only excitation but not contraction here the neurons will not get contract it will just excite then the signal will be carried through another neuron again this chemicals will be dumped here in the synapse again it will be received by another neuron so like that it will be keep continuing here till it reaches the target site so those neurons which keep giving the signals we call it as the motor neurons and those neurons which collect the information we call it as a sensory neurons we'll study about that okay sometimes the cells which are having axon are covered by a insulator insulator like this these insulators we call it as myelin sheath this is called myelin sheath it acts as a insulator so this myelin sheath is secreted by see look at here this myelin sheath is secreted by a kind of glial cells a kind of supporting cells actually they are not carrying the impulses they are just supporting cells okay so this yellow color is nothing but glial cell we call it as a schwann cell schwann cell it is a kind of glial cell the gap between two myelin sheath is known as nodes of ranvier nodes of ranvier ranvier so those neuron with myelinated sheath shows such nodes of ranvier then the signals will be uh, reach fast to the next neuron by jumping into the nodes of ranvier once again we'll study in detail about all those things in the upcoming chapter that is neural tissue that is uh, neural control and coordination chapter okay that's about the neural tissue and muscle tissue hope you like the video and in the next class we need to study about the organisms that is earthworm there are three organisms are mentioned in our ncrt especially cockroach is very important for our neat point of view but don't know sometimes the question may comes from any part so we need to study all the three organism cockroach earthworm as well as the frog first we'll begin from the earthworm itself okay so thanks for watching